My next guest is as real as it gets. He's a genuine person, someone I met long ago, hanging out at the University of Hartford and the keys of staying in touch and just seeing people and having a good connection leads us to this productive conversation. My next guest is none other than the great, the cool, the friendly, and the all-around wholesome dude known as Brasley Young. Brasley, great to see you, buddy. How are you? Appreciate you, my bro. Thanks for welcoming me, welcoming me to, onto the show. But I'm doing good, man. Just... Every day, you know, another day lives, another day well, bro. So I'm chilling, bro. Can't complain. Definitely hear that. So, yes, Brazzy and I met at U-Heart. Our mutual friend, Hasteen Saint Wave. Don't forget to check out his new music. Yes, just dropped Stratosphere. Go check that out. That shit is fire. I was working out to that shit today. That shit was fire, bro. I That's like how what? he has, like, highest fuck and lowest fuck. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm really proud to see what our good buddy Hasteen's doing with his music. And hopefully it's a matter of time as he reaches an even broader audience. So, Brasley, that's our connection here. Meeting at the Fives. Remember Spring Fling, our old friend Brad Finn. Yes, sir. Um, and everything together. You re- you remember that week, infamous weekend, Spring Fling? Uh, um, 2015, I think it was. I would like to say I re- remember more than I can, but honestly, <laughs> it was just a good time. That's all I know. <laughs> I remember that much. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. It was a good time. Yeah, I can good time. say the same thing, you know, just guys being dudes, uh, you know, people making new friends, people singling and mingling and all of exactly. that when you have a college spring weekend, of course. But yeah. You're somebody who likes to go out. You like to have fun. You is that fair to say you like to take advantage, whether the the hottest clubs or the lowest or low key nights, but still a good time. You somebody who likes that stuff? No, bro. Actually, I know. It, no, I know, I know. Like when I met, when I met you, I definitely was on that type of time, like a hundred percent. So I could see, I could see where you're coming from. Like, like when I met you, bro, and like we were like out there, like almost every weekend, going crazy, bro. <laughs> I was definitely about that. But nowadays, bro, I don't even drink, bro. Really? I just be, yeah, I just be playing in crib, bro. You know, I smoke obviously, and just be chilling, smoking whatever, playing yep. in crib, and just playing video games and just trying to keep myself busy working out bro um yeah just trying to keep the mind right yeah. so you're somebody f- who's matured more you would say is that a, a good word to say to this or? yeah i mean like I, I feel like you know i don't like you know what i'm saying i'm not like saying don't fucking drink and don't go mm-hmm. out and don't have fun nothing like that by any means please you know if you're if you drink or you know you go out and you like to have fun like that keep doing it that's what you want to do you know by all means this is for me i realized as i got older that like i already like honestly going out and doing that i kind of already felt that way like i felt like you know i really don't want to be doing this like too too Mm -hmm. often it's just not my type of thing but you know it's cool it's good to like definitely go out and meet people but like i said as i got older man i just would much rather stay in the house and you know stay safe as possible i guess and you know i i had my fun i guess you could say yeah that's the best way to put it i had my fun yeah, like I think that's something I've learned when I got older is that people really do are on their own waves, whether right or wrong. And in terms of going out, at least we'll stick on this subject. Like it's OK for people who'd rather have more low key nights. It's more OK for, for people who want to go crazy. I think yeah. all we just ask is you to be respectful to those around you. 100 percent. Be respectful to yourself. Don't make a bad decision. I think that's the main thing. Be respectful to yourself. That's definitely very important. Yeah. Elaborate. What do you what comes to mind when I said that? And when you think of that statement, be respectful to yourself. And I'll um, say what I um think, too. I mostly mean, like, since, you know, you are going out and being around people, you obviously should be around people that you can rely on in case of like some crazy, you know, that yeah. anything could really happen, you know, so you should respect Especially yourself in enough. this world. 100 percent man you should respect yourself enough to surround yourself around people that are going to take care of you in time of need especially like whatever can happen being out wilding out you know what i mean yes and and especially making the good decisions part and sometimes you have to make those good decisions very fast and 
Oh, right. Um, yeah. I think split that's decisions. one thing. You have to make split decisions and it really does have to be the right one. I think Next. that's one thing I realized too. That's just part of life. Um, you know, I think that's been a profound thing I've been thankfully learned lately. And, you know, just as any other human, I've made good decisions, made bad decisions. I've made decisions I don't know if it was good or bad, but right. I put my um, best faith in it. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. And, you know, the future probably will be the same thing. I'm not a perfect person, but when I say being respectful to yourself, it's what you said, you know, have a confidence in yourself, be, you know, lead by example. I think that's the biggest thing sure. I've been uh, really learning as I get older and I hope I can stay as level headed that way. Do you feel the same? Definitely. I'm like, as I get older, I definitely feel that way. Um, yeah, you know, I'm just trying to make sure my mental is right more than anything. And mental, yep. I feel like sometimes you can get caught up in like, uh, I guess, episodes, if you want to say, of just like binging things, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I've went through those experiences, like I said, and I'm glad I've been able to tell the story because, you know, some people really aren't. Don't yeah, make it out, you know what I mean. That's key, and you don't want to be that example. And you also just put your faith. And sometimes life, life's crazy, man. And all we could do is just try to be the genuine one in the room. That's what at least my motto. Wherever we're at, you know. For sure, for sure, man. But we're gonna be okay either way, as long as you have faith in yourself and you're moving forward. Then there's some good times ahead. And don't feel guilty when you make the right decision. You work hard and things work out. Don't feel guilty about that. And uh, don't feel too cocky and touch the money when it goes bad because Perhaps, bad, bad times really test who you're supposed to be. And everybody has to go through it. You have to have your good days of work. You have to have your bad days of work. Good days going out, bad days going out. Good days seeing people in your family, vice versa. It's, it's with everything, you know? For sure. Oh, man. But man, every time. This is on your new gig as well, bro. I hope that's going well for you. How's that treating you? Long time coming. So far, so good. I really enjoy my coworkers a lot. I appreciate nice. their patience with me. I appreciate the potential they seem to have in me and, and elaborating that out. I just want to pass it on when it's <laughs> remember you remember when you first want yeah, i'm on twitter but i'm not nearly as active as i used to be mm -hmm. i do scroll on it i use it mostly for big brother bro just to keep up with big brother truth today oh yes by the way we, we are crazy. getting we into go, that you, you know we're gonna get yeah exactly i'll say i save it because i've saved some time there but but you know i just i don't even post too much anymore i just scroll retweet or whatever sometimes i'll say a little something something but yeah i'm on twitter and uh i don't know man like I, I don't know how to feel about it because like people mm -hmm. swear like Elon Musk is like evil or whatever the case may be, but I just don't even know because I don't even I don't even try to look into much into it. I really don't because like I don't know. I guess ignorance is bliss. I guess you could say, but yeah, I, I don't really don't know how to feel about it because I don't know the details or yeah. All I know is he, case may be. he Other bought than Twitter forty something forty billion dollars or something. Yeah, forty three billion dollars. Forty three billion. Writing that check. Imagine, bro, and just being know. comfortable. Mad comfortable. comfortable with it, too. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I think of it, if we look at sports teams, pretty valuable. The most, it, it just came out in Forbes. They just released their yearly list of the most expensive sports franchise. Uh, my team, the Yankees, were number one at around six point, I think it's 6.5 billion. 6.5. Think about it. He could have bought, and like the, the, in the top 10, they range between, Two and a half to six billion dollars around the top twenty. Sure. And this this man can buy a few of those franchises right. with that money, and Easily. he simply just gave them a huge offer they can't refuse. And everybody has a price. I mean, those executives—they are getting millions of dollars approving this. So I think that's interesting that it shows like. What were they gonna say? No. <laughs> yeah, right. Like you're gonna see that much money in your face and say, "No, you wildin', bro." Like you can say all you want against it, bro, but you know once that checks in your face, you're gonna take it. 
Yeah, I think it's one thing I, I never really um, thought about. And maybe if, if we're so blessed, we can have this type of problem. When you actually are paid millions and billions of dollars, it could take Jeez. many lifetimes to actually spend all that cash. For sure, yeah. I just, I just find that monumental. I see it as an opportunity. I really believe, I mean, obviously the system's fucked and obviously people are born in different places and some were born on third base. Some are barely in the batter's box. Right. But I'd like to think that at least if you have a good head on your shoulders and you can figure out your surroundings, you're aware of your environment and you have some type of passion you could somehow, some way, you could figure it out to some figure extent, it right? out to some yeah. extent. And I understand it's very hard. The odds are stacked against you, but I'm not saying Agreed. it's absolutely impossible. Yeah. You know, and seeing stuff like this with these comfortable business deals. It's incredible, man. <laughs> it goes to show. And 2022, bro, is insane, bro. These, these years that have passed are like, these past few years have been incredible. Like, I've never seen nothing like this in my life. Man. It's catching up, and we've gone through a pandemic. I mean, obviously, we're still technically going through it, but at least the lockdown phase of it, the quarantine, pre-vax, and yet, as so many people struggle, so many people were still getting profits from it, too. Right. And having said all of this, Brasley, do you see this world more like this is unfair there's no chance um fuck all the rich people stuff or do you see it more like you know i understand we're all in different places but if i work hard and i'm kind i don't know if i'll exactly get be a rich man but at least good things will happen and then sometimes you can't figure it out what what where do you lie in that i mean i would probably probably be like more of like a gray area because like Mm -hmm. i feel like you know, like the like these rich people are definitely definitely need to get taxed because like they they mm-hmm. make so much money that like they're out of tax brackets and they're not getting taxed, right? So like, like yeah, that's I one thing with Elon Musk with this investment, he exactly. doesn't have to pay taxes on it. Exactly. So I do think that, but I'm not gonna say like you know, I'm gonna say like fuck it. It depends on you know, because like with money comes like what people would say is like corruption, but you're not, it's not always shown in the forefront. So like, mm-hmm. it's, it's really hard to say, to be honest. I wouldn't say like, fuck them, but it, something needs to be done about the rich people and in order to, I feel like, give us all a, a more fair chance, a more fair chance. I wouldn't say it's like, you, like you said, it's not impossible. It, it, it's less of a chance than being born into money, though. You know what I mean? Like, you oh, have yeah. less of a chance of making it than being born into money, right? So I feel like if, something needs to be done about the rich in order to give us all more a fair chance to reach. Yeah. Them. And it's probably easier to see it. If you're not in the rich tax bracket, if you look off, you're on the outside looking in, right. How, as I mentioned, it takes many lifetimes to actually spend all this money. It probably takes exactly. many lifetimes for the taxes they're asking for. And I could, I'm not an accountant. I'm not um, extremely rich. I definitely would like to be, I won't lie. <laughs> And I'll go for it, but um, what eh? Yeah, and having said all of this, you th- you think like, damn, um, this is some crazy system here, but I can at least prosper for it, and I I just don't want to be envious of the rich man, and I think that's what's one of the problems with Elon Musk. There are people who really envy how he got his cash. They envy the place he's in. That makes society. sense. I could see where that resentment would come from if 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 it's feeling of envy. Then it makes yeah, sense. no doubt. And I I I you, you could feel the way you feel. All I'm yeah. saying is focusing on your lane, focusing yeah. on the close people around you. Because like, bro, even if like if even if I have something bad to say about it, like he's gonna buy the shit anyway, bro. Right. <laughs> and again, like it's everybody has a price. You can literally pay up money fixes almost every single problem in this world except health. And even yeah. there's I'm sure there's gonna be a way till they pull that off, but but I mean money definitely pla- can help help prolong some health, but it's not gonna fix exactly gonna fix anything. Isn't like, that sure. is that what Wale said? Ask Steve Jobs, money doesn't buy you health. Perhaps. Um 
But like you said, it can definitely prolong it. And it's all about the decisions making at the end of the day. Decisions, decisions, decisions. For sure. <clears throat> oh, man. You know, switches from Elon Musk and Twitter. One thing I am going to ask if you're following this, because it ha- it's a story that's now gone on for weeks. Sure. And I guess if you start from, sadly, this guy's accusations, but it's turned to a shit show. It's been years, but Johnny Depp, dude, I don't fucking know what's going. I don't know what's going on. I'm don't, I don't care. I truly, people don't understand. <laughs> when it comes to me, bro, and these famous people, bro, I don't give a fuck about what they're doing, bro. Like, leave me the fuck alone, bro. I mm-hmm. need to focus on myself, make sure my mental is right, make sure I'm living a a decent life. Like, you know, as long as they're not, you know, murdering anybody, or, you know, while into like that extent. I mean, what can I do? What could I even do about it, bro? All these people have all this money, these lawyers, and this money, bro. What mm-hmm. the fuck could I do, bro? Right? I really don't really, I really don't care. Like, I don't know what the situation is, to be honest with you. I don't know. Something about abuse of some sort, I'm sure. I think, right? Or no? Well, yes. The accusations. Wow, I just look. Sorry, I just, yeah, just watched just, the just Go ahead. I'm, I'm interested. It's fine. You, no, I'm no, 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 no. I'm, I'm not distracting you, but I only bring it up because I was going to make this bet. That this player was gonna hit a home run. I'm like, nah. Oh, okay. <laughs> and of course he just hit a home run, Joey Gallo. But that's how it is. Anyway, sorry. That's um, okay. Regarding this case from yeah. I'm not, you know, I've I see as much as the headlines tell me I haven't taken the time to actually look into it. And there's a lot of Facts. memes about it. Just so many memes. That's but what I'm trying to like. I think the initial accusations that his ex-wife Amber Heard accused Johnny Depp of domestic domestic disputes and violence okay however okay. and it was a different and he sued and she sued him back for defamation i believe it was wait, wait, who, filed the, who filed the the complaint to begin with was it him i or think her? The, if all right let me let me just back up i think yeah. she either i think she, oh, this is why i gotta do my homework on this okay um, so we, we both don't okay <laughs> uh I basically I think that Amber Heard accused Johnny Depp of domestic violence, not suing accused, and now he's suing her in a defamation case. I believe. Got that. it. Okay, that That's okay. Now I get it. I thought you were saying she was suing him for defamation, but now I got it. I got yeah, it. I believe so. And don't quote me on that, but um, yeah. I believe that's the case. But bottom yeah. line, it's it's it is everywhere. You know, it is insane. But yeah, I have the I have the. Blah, 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 to take the stand regarding Depp. Is, okay, here it is. Donnie Depp is suing Amber Heard for $50 million over a response in an opt ed Herod, the uh, company, uh, Herod letter. Blah, blah, blah. Sorry. Johnny okay. Depp is suing Heard over a opt ed that Heard wrote in the Washington Post about being a victim of domestic violence. So, yes, that was what I said. She okay. accused him of domestic violence, didn't sue him for it, but accused right. him in the Washington Post, and he sued her for $50 million. And it's, you know, for somebody, for at least two people who are going through hell, their families, especially him as the victim, and all these stories going on about him, her taking the shit on the bed, her um, lighting <laughs> out. Yeah, that's literally her lighting out uh, cigarettes on him wow. and all this shit. Um, he's going through hell. And it's funny how society's, you know, making memes and telling these stories. I mean, we're talking about it, you know, isn't that I mean, like this? Is, it's kind of the same thing with like uh, the fucking Oscars, bro. You know what I mean? Like the Will Smith dove. Yeah. They're going through some real life shit, you know, and clearly it boiled up to a certain point where Will Smith felt like he needed to check Chris Rock, <laughs> you know. So, oh boy. you know, it's it's pretty similar in that sense. Like people go through real life shit, and you don't really know until like shit hits the fan, right? Yeah, and then you do on um, literally the biggest stage you can. Exactly. Oh, unbelievable! And yeah, I guess I just saw read today that he hasn't officially. Um, personally, personally apologize. He made a statement, but he didn't actually, you know, go to him face to face and say, "Hey, I'm sorry." Is it? Is just like I said, is that celebrity world that we're not a part of? No, I'll never understand it. I can't wrap my head around it. There's, they move different ways. There's certain ways they move that I'll never get. You know. Man, imagine walking on the street every single day if you're famous. Say, hey, people coming up to you, Brasley. 
pictures, this, that. And then probably their days you're having a good day. Like, oh, look at the sun's out. Look at all these beautiful people around me. Now they're coming up to talk to me. But then there's probably days you're having a bad day. There's something exactly. at home. There's somebody sick who you care about. You keep thinking. Then people are asking for your pictures. Like, not today. And it's like, no, well, fuck this guy. And yeah, I think I'll be pretty a annoyed after a while. Honestly, I right? think I'll be pretty annoyed after a while. Yeah, like, the only other explanation I've heard that was kind of cool was my boy David Letterman, who, if anyone sees my stories, I, I watch his show every night so I can, or reruns of his show, so I can sure. prepare as a host for situations like this. Got you. And, inspiration. Oh, yeah, for sure. Gotcha. And I always liked how he talked to different people. Obviously, you yeah. had your movie stars, but then he'd have like, a chef and a cook and obviously every single host does that now but he like really started that you know thanks but anyways um he said that being famous is like being in a small town everybody knows your name that makes sense that makes a lot of sense yeah except there's no getting out of the small town (laughs) yeah right maybe when you're old it must be great to be old and famous because you know, you live this accomplished life and I don't think as many people will hog you, you know? Yeah. They're like, you know, you're definitely going to be taken away more easily. Like you're probably not even going to be going out as much, you know, when you're older. So. Mm-hmm. Right. You, you have the mistake to you, but uh, it's an interesting world. And luckily we, uh, you know, are still real to ourselves. <laughs> you know, even though there's, there's a lot of shit in this world to be a lot of, there's a lot of Nasty, nasty things in this world. I do be grateful to wake up and, you know, have my five senses, bro. You know, working body, bro, a healthy body. Mm-hmm. Be, just just got to take the little things for, you know, appreciate the little things for sure. For sure. What's one of the realest things you saw recently? Like, what's something wholesome? Like, what, any, it, the, it doesn't have to be the realest. Like, what's something real wholesome, dope? Maybe it's funny that you happen to see. Real wholesome or dope that I happen to see. Mm-hmm. To be honest, I don't. I don't. Let me see. I mean, it wasn't anything crazy. It was just like I mean, it happens almost. It happens a lot. I'm not gonna lie. I don't want to sound like that, but it happens a lot when I'm working and shit. Mm-hmm. Cause like I, I, I serve like I'm a server right mm-hmm. at Texas Roadhouse. So like people just like I hate. To, I don't mean to be that guy, but like people like they fuck with me and you know they usually like me and shit. But like you know. <laughs> At the end, at the end of like I was serving this par- like bridal party or whatever, this girl just got um, was about to have a wedding or whatever, and it was like a party of t- eight or ten. And like towards the end, they like they were, they were like loving me. Everyone's loving mm-hmm. me, of course, whatever. So like towards the end, like they're getting up, and then the one lady's like, she's like opening up her arms for an embrace, and she's like, "Look at us!" I'm like, "Look at us!" <laughs> <laughs> you know. Uh, we, like made it, we made it we made it look, look how far we've come you know oh man you angels know, I... and now we're hugging and now see you later <laughs> isn't it something the service industry oh it's 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 interesting very interesting animal and i honestly as much as i be having some bad days sometimes i really enjoy i do enjoy the bond of work especially if you have a good group around you a group of co-workers oh yeah well. definitely makes life easier it's kind of it's like it's, I know it sounds crazy, but it's kind of like you have a lot of freedom to do what you want. Not really do what you want, but it's like your tables are kind of like your own business, so to speak, right? Because like mm-hmm. you have complete control over them type shit. Yeah, like I kind of, not that I've been a server myself, but I've, I've been, I, Uber, I'm an Uber driver, so I do off of that service. Yeah, yeah. And I, I did the DoorDash at a certain point. Did yeah, the done the DoorDash, done the Uber itself. Now that I have a few months of that under my belt and had crazy experiences there. Like yeah, they, you see you see a lot, bro, because you just be out. You just be out and you see a lot. And Yeah, all you know? through North Jersey, New York City, and yep. I've gone as far as I did one trip, Brasley, from Newark, New Jersey, the airport. And you don't know where you're going. The, um, unless you hit a certain number, it, it's, it's so stupid. If you hit an 85% acceptance rate they won't tell you for uber driving this is uber driving and if you hit 85 percent acceptance rate and have a four percent cancellation rate they will tell you the direction you're going in exact the exact time 
but anything under that you don't. It just oh, wow. says, you know, a couple minutes away. So that's kind of annoying, yeah. Yeah, I pick somebody up. It's, they didn't tell me where they're going. Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and no, I'm just, up. I'm just like, like guess we're going. You, you can't cancel the car, the ride. If the last time you, you say get out of my car, or cancel it, then you know whatever <laughs> complaint, whatever complaints follows, just get ready to defend yourself. Can't yeah, get ready to deal with that. Whatever. And I did think for a second, what, 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 what good excuse could I come? What, what could I say? And I wound up sucking it in, and but I will never do it again. If that ever happened again, I would, I would put me with the CEO of Uber, and I'll say this is absolutely ridiculous because one. I did. It was an 85 mile trip south. I still have to drive 85 miles back. I only get paid for the tolls on the ride, 15 in tolls, not the tolls back. And the guy didn't give a tip. It was $77. And I still think that's not enough. No way. At least that's like, that like barely is going to cover your gas. For yeah. Because you got to drive back. Exactly. And, you know, now that I'm, I had that under my belt and got another job since, and I can just do it as a side hustle. I could uh, put a fight for it, but that was one of the worst experiences ever. And no tip. There was this yeah. guy like not conscious enough. Were they, were they even nice that. people or what? I mean, the guy kept, fell asleep in my car. I guess he was comfy, oh, but he was, comfy. Um, he was real cozy. No, I, I hate, I legit hate that guy. Wherever yeah, I'm sorry he I had to experience that. I'm sorry yeah. I had to experience it, that. It's all good. It's all good. It's over now. And yeah, it is sure. funny, but like all anyone who gives any type of service, whether right. sir, whether serving at a restaurant, whether you're delivering food, Ubering, you're um, doing a car wash or somebody's helping your car. Like the tips are so, so damn important. And I never did, never did a job where I need where I had tips until this Uber job. And I was, I feel like robbed. I should have known how important this was. And I've always tipped, but well, like, I realized for how... me, so, like in the restaurant industry specifically, because yeah. like Uber is not like there's no like set number, but it is still a very low number, like the base pay per se, right? It's still a very low number, but there's no like, yeah, it's whatever the fare number. is, whatever the exactly. fare is. But yes, I would love to hear your but perspective. To put it in, exactly, to put it in a, a perspective is like in the service industry, like we get paid six dollars an hour, six dollars an hour because we're being, we're a tipped um, mm -hmm. worker. So we rely on the tips to survive, literally. literally. Yeah, you guys need it more than us. And it's, um, it's, it, it does it really bother you still to this day those people who skimp or people who I mean of are course awful, awful about it and stuff um I mean like I don't hold no type of grudge towards them or anything like that of course in a moment I'm going to be annoyed because I have a lot going on around me emotions right. are, a lot's going on you know high strong all this so of course I'm gonna feel some type of way but I once they out the door on next table I'm already on to the next table mm -hmm. uh, like, I don't got time to be dwelling on that shit, fucking up my mood to fuck up my money potentially to go, like, for the next table, you know? Because if I come pulling up to the next table all sluggish and all, uh, like, no, I don't got time for that. Like, just yeah, get yeah, out of here. Let's just go on to the next. Let's go. I th I but there that. are people in this industry, yeah, I do feel some type of way. Like, oh, my God, I take it so personally. Mm -hmm. This girl was telling me the other day, I take it so personally. I'm like, <laughs> bro, some people are just... just some people just Scumbag. don't either know. First of all, they don't even know. They don't understand. But I'm not. Most people in America, they know. But I'm, but it's actually true. Some people don't know, and other people are just not going to do it. They're just not going to do it. Just is what it is. Like it comes with the territory. You know what you signed up for. You know. Oh yeah, and like the. It's also I know like tipping isn't that big in like other countries, for instance. Exactly, exactly. When people are coming from other countries, I experienced that a lot. I worked in Orlando. Uh, I used to, when I, li I lived in Orlando for a year and I worked mm -hmm. um, at Universal Boulevard, which is like literally 15 minutes from Universal Studios. So nice. Yeah. Yeah. Mad diff people from all around the world, bro, coming through, bro. So like people like some people that ass don't know like that. That's where I really got that understanding of people don't know mm -hmm. coming from other countries that they that we live off of the tips because in their countries, their servers are actually paid a livable wage so they don't like the tip is just like a little sun a little extra 
Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah, I would. I wish we could figure out the tip big industry for every for I, all the jobs. I, I feel like honestly, I feel like there wouldn't be a debate between like people who serve and like people who think, oh, I'm not tipping because of whatever the case, whatever the reasoning is. I don't give a fuck if you feel that way. If you, that's just how you feel, whatever. But I feel like a way to eliminate that would be just pay fucking servers a livable wage. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, I make at least twenty an hour. Off the, like the way I, I work now, just pay me yeah. fucking twenty an hour. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. <laughs> and I, I, I so get fucking it. cheap. They're so cheap, and 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 they make a lot of money. You know, doing it this way. And I'm sure, with uh, some research and hard work, they can figure that problem out once and for all. Bro, they make so much money. There's no reason. There's no reason yeah. for them to not be paying us that. Right. <sighs> and then eliminate that whole thing of like. People saying, oh, I'm not tipping, blah, 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 or server saying, I hate people that don't tip or whatever the case, you know. I mean, it's not that big of a problem in the world, obviously. There's way mm-hmm. crazy shit going on, but just talking about this since we're talking about it, you know. Definitely. It's going to get solved. It's, I mean, it has to get solved one way or the other. I feel like like people just got to, we have people would just have to like fucking go on strike or some bullshit. Yeah, I'm about to say unionize. Imagine, yeah. is there a, u- a server's union out there? I'm not, I'm truly not sure. Maybe. I doubt it, though. I truly doubt it, but maybe. Oh, yeah. Pull it out the realm of possibility. I know in, I believe in New York, the Amazon workers started to unionize, which yeah, was yeah, awesome that, to see. That. Um, I think Uber, Uber drivers are stri- all, or I should say all rideshare drivers are. And even wow. if I never Ubered again, if there's any way I could support that, I, I would. Yeah. I, but I really believe politics aside, the unions got to help all these people struggling, especially in a time of inflation we're dealing with now. It's Every incredible. price is higher. I mean, twenty dollars used to like, get me thirty. Twenty dollars used to get me three quarters of a tank, and now it's like a uh, little under half. Yep. Same same situation here, bro. Then they somehow make the tolls get higher with that bullshit, too. You think just all the gambling money alone with these states and focuses on New York and New Jersey and Connecticut, Tri-State area states where it's legalized. Like they could just knock out the tolls, take away from the gamblers. 100 percent, man. But, you know, that's another conversation for another day. But again, try to be the genuine one in the room. Now, Brasley, let's talk Big Brother. Okay. Can I tell you? Can I? Can I? Wait, you go. Go Go ahead. (laughs) I was going to say, for those who don't know, Big Brother has been a show that's been on CBS since the year 2000 to 2022. Show that's been on the air in America for 22 years. It is a popular game show that all countries do where people are locked in a house, in a house, watch 24 7. And you have to survive three months and you literally vote people out like Survivor. You get certain perks and benefits. And the last man, woman, or person standing is uh, the winner. And there are special super fans, as they call it, like a little community. Like when you find out, you watch Big Brother 2, you're like, you're part of the club. And I really think for anybody who would take the time to watch it, for for it. most it's seasons, so worth it's it. worth it. It's it, it's it just and it's interesting and I, I'm I think they're starting to there. fix fix the problems that uh um I've been noticing throughout the few years. But the four is yours, Bradley. What do you got to say? I'll just put it out there. Paramount Plus. If you have Paramount Plus, mm-hmm. you should w- definitely watch Big Brother Canada because mm. it is very raw. Like Big Brother US, it started off very raw, very real. As the years went on, kind of. It's more bland and more of the same shit until last season recently. Yeah, that's well, exactly Brother, what I was saying. Big Brother Canada is incredible. This season is actually, bro, Matt, this season. Do you watch Canada or no? I've seen a lot of clips. I've seen the Big Brother Canada fights, but I haven't followed a season yet. I can send you a vid- a link to a website that has all the seasons if you want to check it out, bro. And this yeah, I got Paramount Plus too. Okay. This season isn't on Paramount Plus yet, but. Oh, okay. This season specifically, bro, is actually the best Big Brother I've seen in the past five years. I'm not even kidding, bro. There's no majority alliance, bro. So like, it's kind of like, and mm-hmm. this point is final five, and it's literally anybody, anybody could win. Anyone and this is through, no matter what country this is, 
this is in a matter of it's online and stuff. This is the best Big Brother season you've seen in years. Oh uh, yeah, well I only watch U.S. and Canada because a lot of the Between other those countries, two, okay. A lot of the other countries, it's a, like basically a popularity contest. You have the public voting the, oh, the that's house stupid. guests out. That's so opposed, stupid. Yeah, because like U.S. and Canada though is like the house guests. Okay. Each other out. And you're saying Big Brother Canada, and usually for those who don't know, when you go in, what? 12 to 16 people they you know you, you make These your days group it's usually 16 yeah, yeah so we'll say 16 people you make your alliances then you try to vote off the people with your squad some break up some get power hungry and as brasley was saying especially the years prior of these alliances, it would just be the strongest people squatting up it's not interesting it's boring and predictable and predictable and it was celebrity big brother was the first time I, I just tapped out i was like i'm done i'm literally watching the same show and it's not even cool but you're telling me that this season's big brother canada Incredible. didn't have those alliance just pure hard nose blunt for it was basically gameplay. it was basically one side versus the other most of the time and there wasn't even there wasn't even solid they weren't even so, the thing is they weren't even solid sides so just mm-hmm. like many individual players and like this is is incredible. The last, and they have a trip. Okay, so there's a difference between Big Brother Canada and Big Brother US. Big Brother US has like a double eviction. Big Brother Canada has certain seasons, three seasons specifically, mm-hmm. and including this season. There's a triple eviction sometimes. Oh, they fit that all in an hour. All an hour. So basically, what it is is the first eviction, like you know how in the double first eviction, boom. Then they do the HOH. The HOH nominates three people, mm. and then there's a veto, and mm-hmm. then. After the veto, the people who aren't on the block vote for they don't vote for who they want to evict. They vote for one person to stay. That's kind of cool, actually. So, the, Wait, so why two, two out of the this? two out of the three nominees on the block will go home. So that's the triple eviction, the mm. first eviction, and then the last second eviction to go home. OK, OK. Now, now this is this is cool, actually. I might even catch up with that. You should I watch might even season, bro. So watch this season. I'm definitely I'm willing right now. Send me this link. Brasley, do you think you could be on the show someday? I've been trying, bro. I applied this year. Nothing. haven't heard anything yet, but, you know, you never know. If I think I kind of fucked up on my audition tape, but it's all good. I'm going for it again next year if it doesn't happen. Um, I've been trying to manifest it, so hopefully it does happen. Yeah, I know a lot of people. Well, well, I don't know them, but, you know, you hear these stories of past cast members who said it took, you know, a couple of tries and then they got in. Yeah. And, um. Who was some of your favorites of all time? Now, there's a legit history with this show. Uh, you favorites know. of all time? Yeah. Who are just some of your favorite? Who brought you some joy? Who made you laugh? What all? Who I'll, made I'll you and, mad? Or who, who, are, who, who stuck out to you? I'll try and start in order. I'll go from like season, like U.S. seasons, right? Yeah, we're focusing. So, we'll focus on the U.S. just because I that's season the one. one I, I, I truly never watched, but I do know one person from there because he was in the All-Star seasons a little bit later. Chicken, Chicken George. George. Really fucking funny. <laughs> you know, Chicken George, of course. Season two, obviously, Dr. Will and Boogie. Um, season three, Daniel Reyes. She oh, yeah. won that season. Uh, season four, June, obviously the winner. She was really good. Um, season five. That's when I started watching uh, Nicomis, season five. Nicomis. I like Nicomis. Nicomis. Yeah, yeah, she, she had the twin. They had the yeah, twins. They just so brother, happened yeah. to find them. Insane. She came up with the original six finger plan, which was the original backdoor plan. I don't know yeah. yeah. She came up with the original backdoor plan before like anything crazy was happening. Anyways, season six. Um, of course, Janelle, Kaser, um, James. <laughs> Oh, and they went out during Celebrity Big Brother during the pandemic. You're just like, fuck. Oh, they, oh during uh, All Stars, you're talking about. Yeah, sorry, All Stars too. Second yes. All Stars, yeah. And yeah, then that once that happened, I knew the game was over. But I already knew Cody. Was. Like once once Janelle and Casey got out the house, of course Cody was gonna win. You know, okay. I I met somebody who met Cody. I actually met Derek. Actually, after you met the Derek. Season. Yeah, you I, met right Derek who season. won. Right, right after his season, I went to go audition in the city, and he was like, dapping up everybody, blah blah blah. And then for some reason, I don't know what happened. He was like, he's like had his phone or something he gave his phone to my dad i don't know he's like he got my dad and it's like yo like just record this blah blah, blah. and it's like had my dad recording him he's not gonna just take it as far like see this is mine now my dad like, like, he, he just trusted oh, no, him he, like he, that? He, he made my dad use his phone i forgot how it happened exactly it was a few years ago mm-hmm. but yeah my dad's like following him around he's stepping people up we're like 
talking to him and shit. And then he's like, then I got his email. And then we sent them that video to his email. He's like, we're like getting into like past places where we shouldn't be. He's like, yo, there was CBS and shit. So that was kind of cool. But I don't know if I really per se like him as a game player. But we'll get back to that because I, mm-hmm. I left off at season six, right? Season, season six, six, yep. Season seven, Dr. Will. And Buggy again, of course, Daniel Reyes and uh, James Ryan, all these people I said already, so never mind. But hey, obviously, Evil Dick, Danielle was good in that season too. Um, mm-hmm. Eric was okay. Um, Jen was hilarious. Her and Evil Dick's freaks were hilarious. <laughs> season nine, I don't really care for. Um, but what's her name? Shelly or something like that? She was like, she was pretty funny. Um, oh, that was the guy who wound up winning and then he became the plug with his cat. He became the plug, yeah. <laughs> The kind of plug. Oh Se- man! Season ten, obviously Dan, one of the goats. Um, eleven. Um, no love for eleven. I, I mean, it was a good season, but I don't really like anybody per se. Ooh. Russell was okay, I guess. Russell, um, season eleven. Um, yeah, that's Jeff and Jordan. Jeff and Jordan's first. Oh season. yeah. So I don't really care for them. Whatever. <laughs> I'm a big brother. Yo, Jeff is a overrated. Like people love him, but he didn't really. I don't care. For he, him. he didn't. He didn't really do much. He won a the, couple comps, whatever. Yeah, but, but he, yeah, he never made like a final four or nothing like that. Right. Yeah, you're right. He never. Yeah, he's just that far. he's just good on TV, I guess. But you were saying no, but now we're at 12. That's the uh, so, the brigade. The brigade, of course, the great meow meow for me. Oh, that's not what I'm trying to run into. Um. Yeah, that's just that's all you got to say right there. Like, obviously, he didn't win. But he came up with the whole strategy. It was his whole strategy. Mm-hmm. So he's a great for sure. 13. What's 13? 13. That was, was that when they. Oh, that's when they came. What? That's the, when they, they had the a, big six come back. The, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rachel, Rachel won that one. Yes. Rachel won that one. So obviously, I mean, Eva Dick was only there for like a week or two, barely. Yeah. But um, Portia was fire and she was pretty good at the game. Um. Danielle was pretty cool in that game, but she started bugging out towards the end. Um, <laughs> 14. I liked Ian, and Dan came back that season. I liked Dan should have won that. He should be a, a double should've. winner. There is no double winner, and I think he should have been it, but it's whatever. Because, yeah. like, if they didn't vote him out after that dumbass funeral, bro, they, he deserves to win. Bro. Yeah, and just that's one thing it shows. Jury management's a thing. You get people salty. They don't They don't want to. Even they though wanna they should, money. they should on the merit of the game exactly it just won't <laughs> so better asses yeah 15 we don't really talk about 15 um oh yeah the see, we know what the uh the, racist the, prejudice, the racist guns that's what that's what that one's called the racist season for anybody you know, just, <laughs> it, i mean amanda was okay but like i said these all these people i'm saying are even they're just fucking they were saying Disgusting things, but anyway, fuck that. And not, and then when she was called out, that girl Aaron with Julie, Aaron, and she was just like, "Yeah, that's how we talk." Like, what are you saying in Texas? Like, what are you saying? Like, I'm sure it is. Gina Marie's <laughs> crazy ass. Gina Marie, oh my god, these people—they definitely fucked up the casting. That's. Oh yeah, sixteen right. is Derek. I mean, it was boring game because these people are. I feel like a lot of them were dead ass stupid and dead ass were so <laughs> dumb, bro. Like most of his cast. So like, it's not that impressive of a win. Like, yeah, you know, he never never hit the block, whatever. And yeah, he not. And of course, you know, it's not easy to win that game by any means. But I feel like there was a handicap for him to win. Yeah, game. right. In that house were fucking dumb as bricks, and the only person who figured it out was Donnie, and he couldn't win anything. So. <laughs> so. Yeah, so and then we're at 17, which is that's Steve Moses' win. He was okay. Um, yeah, I, I love that. Even though Vanessa Clear was the best. Vanessa, yes. Um that was still like a dope win. <laughs> like, yeah, look, like because he, he, he kind of he kind of started to win out towards the end, right? Like he yeah, won, he like, won he won the final HOH. He got her out. He cut so, Vanessa, so, so that was the biggest play of the game. True. Yeah, so maybe if you can give it up, Vanessa. That's the biggest play of the game. So yeah. So maybe thinking back, maybe that that really was how it was supposed to be. True. So we're at 18 now. Um, oh, that's Paul's first time, I think, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Talk about the first. He got there <laughs> twice. He got to the end twice. Yeah, man. My Imagine brother that. met him. He ran into him at Milford. Really? Yeah. That I think is, it's the, the, what was it? Some, I think some bar in Milford. Is he an interesting guy? 
Yeah, he said he was cool because my brother's also tries to go on too. He, he uh, he's applied before did the interview and that, and he asked him for advice. He said, "Yeah, do it, bro, do it." It's very encouraging. <laughs> nice. Then we have Josh, who's the Josh most annoying funny. winner. Oh my god! Honestly, <laughs> I have something. I have so I have two Twitters. I don't use the the other Twitter anymore. It's it was like strictly for Big Brother. Now I just don't even care. But mm-hmm. one of my headers is actually um. The moment when Josh beat Paul. Hang on. I don't know. Can I screen share? Is that a thing? Can I show you? My yeah, yeah. Screen. So this will obviously only be seen by the YouTube, but you do you know how to screen share on Zoom? Um, no, 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 no. Okay, it's on the bottom that you literally press share screen. And I'll uh explain oh, yes. it to our listeners. So if you want to click that real quick. Yeah, sure thing. Host disabled participant screen sharing. What did I? That's what it says when I clicked it. Let me try to change it real quick. I didn't know I could do it. I didn't know I had the power. <laughs> you got the power, brother. Excuse me. Excuse me. Um, screen sharing. Do, 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 do. Um, see if I could get it in two minutes or in two seconds or less. We're good. But uh, as people are waiting, we have Josh Martinez. Remember, it was Mark, right? Yes. This dude went to his face and it's just pants, put, 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 on hitting those damn pots and pans. To this day, I don't know how he did not swing at him. Especially, right? I mean, you got to commend the guy for not. And but like out of every reason to punch a guy in the face that was one but i really can't find it now and not to waste any time but what is the um so basically i was just really happy like i didn't care that josh won i was just really happy that paul lost and it's just (laughs) the moment when julie revealed the last vote to win and paul's like this and josh is like this and he's just like not because he's because he's thinking because Paul got into the final two in his first season. He got into yep. the final two in his second season again. So he's like looking at the, it's. It came down to it was a tie vote. Four yeah, four. one dude, Cody, literally decided who won Big Brother. So he's like, you know, that look in his eyes, despair, like not again, having pizza, yeah. <laughs> like just bugging out, like not again, not again. And but the only reason is because this guy was an asshole and like was bullying people. So that's the only reason. I got joy of him losing that game like that. This you talk about Paul? Yeah. Yeah, and the thing was, the one dude who was his legit enemy and pissed him off, Cody, Cody. who I understand he literally came off as a dick, but he he, he was, was just, a dickhead, but but he was um yeah, but he, but knew, he at least he was he, real. He had it. Paul's number, bro. He had Paul's number, bro. Yeah, and he at least he wasn't he was unapologetic. And he was clearly himself. <laughs> like when they voted him out, he's not gonna do the pretend hugs and everything. But bye, you see it, nerds. And yeah, that I mean, that really shows you you need to uh, that shows you to uh, um, you never know who you f- affect in your life. Yeah, I just I don't know. I just really like this fucking show. I've been mad passionate about it for mad years, bro. I don't know. It's just really interesting dynamic. It's like a real social experiment just to see the dynamics from person to person relationship to relationship, seeing how they hold up when a tough decision needs to be made. Shit is incredible. It's really it's really dope. It, it really is a interesting experiment of human behavior. It really mm-hmm. is. And also to round it out, just because we're so close, they, you had the Casey winning. That was a bad one. Tyler should have won. Tyler should have won, but she just won out, bro. Like, you know, and he could have done about that one. He just dropped. I feel like he dropped the bag. He, felt he dropped the ball on that one. And jury management on CN. Yep. It's all jury again. management. Then you had Jackson win, the only dude to be uh, upset that he won because they had they called him out on some racist shit he did. <laughs> Me? I'm racist? I'm racist? <laughs> hey, bro, I have to say, even that though he, he was funny. a dick and he clearly did some awful it was, things. It's a decent win, I guess. But yeah, imagine you winning, you winning this big reality TV show then also getting first, caught on your bullshit. The first thing you hear is so... Some things you said are racist. Yeah, <laughs> right. How do the you only... <laughs> respond to that? <laughs> he, he was he was nervous. He he felt not the word nervous. What's the word? He clearly was stressed out after winning. Oh, he had anxiety out the wazoo. What insane! And then you had uh, 
uh, Cody win All Stars too, and then that brings us to Xavier winning last year. Yeah, Xavier's winning last year. So that was basically, a there's a there's a lot of history with this show. It's like usually there's like only like one, two, maybe three black people in the house. Um, yep. Last year was the first year that they did uh, half and half, half half people of color, half um, white cast. Finally. So basically, all the black people in the house was like. We're gonna run this shit, and they <laughs> created a secret alliance, and they never the cookout were were discovered until the end, and they made it to the final six. It's never been done in Big Brother history before. Uh, day one alliance, making it that far, sticking it to the end, and Xavier won. I look at that, and definitely nobody will complain. And another reason for First another guy black to... winner of U of US, by the way. Oh yes, yes. Big history there. And another one, the guy who he, sh- he could have punched him in the face. He went personal. Oh, Ky- Kylan? Ky- yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was he was like? Funny. Just talking about his brother. And I'm his, like, his nephew. He's, nephew. Like, he's basically was saying, like, what would what would your uh, you just would you teach your nephew to act like this or something like that? Like, yeah. Ahead. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> this is a these people. I get it. If you're in a place for 100 days with no phone, no regular for, food, you're going crazy. For, Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. That's yeah. the whole thing. It's like once like, oh, man. Yeah. Like these people have to understand the reality, too. Like, it's just a game. He didn't, you know, but, he didn't fight. He didn't punch you in the face or anything. But now you're going to see him in a bro. You're going to see him in a week. Literally, literally, literally. But what a show. I hope we see you on it very soon, Brasley. And people got to check it out. CBS yeah, in the summer. I really, I really encourage you to if you have if you're looking for something to binge. Yeah, I definitely encourage you. If you have Paramount Plus, it's there for you. I highly recommend the Canadian seasons. They're so incredible. Out of 10 seasons, there's 10 Canadian seasons. Out of these 10 seasons, seven of them are really fucking good. And my opinion. My opinion. Just what other, before we just switch to our last topic. Sure. Excuse me. What are some of those awesome, what are some other awesome moments you haven't mentioned? Like Reagan's epic destroying of um rachel without swearing this guy just ripped her apart with just an intelligent ass mind and stuff yeah for sure wow that's a throwback i forgot about this the reagan that that was dope and you know she said one of the worst things i ever heard are you this way because you're gay i'm like come on no that was a time that That was a time to what the fuck we're saying things like that you know we were so all we were also like fucking yeah. educated about that type of thing not gonna lie for sure i'm not excusing it by any means of course of course stop i'm just but... telling you what i'm just telling people what it was yeah it's, it's a show of the climate change but regardless he she shouldn't have said, said that anyway but no right he came back at her no it's not because i'm like this it's because this that and the other and it was just stating facts pure that, facts literally if you want to know how to properly argue against someone watch that shit um that was dope you had um, some other epic moments. I'm trying to think. The damn funeral was cool. Um, you know, remember they had Jerry, the uh, old Marine. Oh, yeah. He this. was playing in his 70s, and he made it the final three. Crazy. <laughs> Fucking crazy. Man. Some of these arguments they come up with. I remember she, he was him skate out the door. You're going home. Oh yeah, he was wild and that man <laughs> that man was something. That was funny times. Oh man. Wild funny times indeed. Uh, is there anyone else? Other other fun memories that you've seen from that show? Nothing too crazy. I mean, like if I feel like a lot of people that are listening to that are gonna listen to this, if they don't know what I'm talking about, it's not gonna mean shit to them. You know what I mean? But I don't really have anything else I could think of. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, last thing I'd like to ask, Bradley, just killing it. You and I chiming it up for an hour. I appreciate this time and uh, getting back in the groove of things with this show. It's great to have you part of that spark. Yes, I guess sir. the last thing I'll mention is may you do the Proust questionnaire with me. Ten questions I ask everybody after their first appearance. <laughs> that sounds dope. Yeah, let's go. My first question, the Proust questionnaire, 10 questions to know you a little more. And 
you can, this is open ended too. This isn't like one word answers. Just open ended. Tell me what you think. First question: What is your favorite word? Damn. Damn. Favorite word? That's right. Uh, I'm a fan of like intriguing, eloquent. Those are really dope words. Intriguing, eloquent. Yeah. Love it. Love it. Absolutely love it. The next question is, what's your least favorite word? Mm. I like, uh, the reason it took me, like, I couldn't decide between the two is because I really do love words in general. Like, I love breaking down the words and mm -hmm. putting together words, music especially as well, right? So mm -hmm. to say my least favorite word, I really don't know, bro. I like, I like a lot of, I do enjoy, I thoroughly enjoy, like, words and language. Appreciate so, that. Um, I had to pick. I really can't think of one. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like mm -hmm. everyone likes to say moist, but I don't even think it's that serious. <laughs> That's definitely been a uh, popular one when asked that question. Another question I like to ask is is uh, sorry, one second, my thing just popped off against me. Oh, good, oh, good. So the next question I have for you. One second. I can, I appreciate this computer a lot. It's just old and uh, sometimes things turn off. But this next question is not necessarily a sexual question, but it's more of a fulfillment question. What turns you on in this world? Mm. Wow. Interesting. Um... <laughs> I would have to say passionate people. I feel like it's good to surround yourself around them, right? If you find yourself around people who are passionate, hopefully it should rub off on you if you're not that way already. And it could help you with be inspired in some way, shape, or form, I guess. Oh, yes. You have to be around the company you keep. It makes a big difference, huge difference sure. with who you hang out with. What's your least favorite word? Sorry, why did I say that? Um, what turns you off in this world? Oh, negative people. Hate it. Like, not, I mean, of course, there's times everyone's going to experience negative emotions, right? As of course. But like every fucking minute of every fucking day, keep that energy away from me. I don't got time for it. Hear that, dude. Hear that. Great stuff. Um, what sound or noise do you love? Sound or noise? Mm -hmm. Oh, the saxophone is pretty nice. The sound of a saxophone. That's a first. I love that. Great answer. Great answer. What sound or noise do you hate? Fucking alarm clock, bro. <clears throat> Ooh. <laughs> specifically the uh, especially the i the apple one exactly yes exactly noise that will trigger all of us oh man what's your favorite curse word chip or fuck chip or fuck shit or fuck shit or fuck i was about to say is this like a uh, british word or something <laughs> <I learned? laughs> all right good one good one what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Um, maybe designing software or something like this. Ooh, okay, okay. Awesome, awesome. What profession would you not like to do? Honestly, hard labor, bro. I'm not about it. <laughs> not no about hard it. labor, nah. Not about it. I respect all you motherfuckers who do do it because that shit is hard work. Mm -hmm. but not for me. Definitely, definitely. My last question for today, Brasley, is if heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say to you when you arrive at the pearly gates? You did well. <laughs> Can't have it any better than that. <laughs> Brasley, is there anything else you want to say before we go today? Guarding the world, your Twitter, your Instagram. Go download, brother. go download Saint Wave Stratosphere because that shit is fire. Oh, 
<laughs> what wonderful words from the wonderful Brazzy the Young. Well, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for starting a new era in this show. And just thank you for being a great dude. I hope to see you very soon. And I appreciate every second. Nice. You're a good man, Brasley. Please, please bring that energy out to everybody as you usually do. Appreciate you, my bro. Appreciate you, my bro. That's Brasley Young, everybody. And we'll see you soon.